It's Wednesday. Time for our weekly trip to the news. And Neil Anderson joins us live this morning from Swamico. Good morning, Neil. Well, good morning. Well, it's dark outside. We're inside. A little lighter in here. Actually, a little warmer because we're inside our education center and we're with our snakes today. And with me over here is Hisabella. Mm. And you know, there's about 3,000 uh, species of snakes in the world. And uh, of that, there's about 375 that are venomous. Now, this is um, a boa. She's a red tailed boa. She's not a venomous snake. Uh, although I will tell you this, if she did bite you, uh -huh. it really wouldn't feel that good because yeah. you got about a couple hundred teeth that are curved back. But uh, the one thing with boa constrictors, you know, they've been in the pet trade and uh, this was uh, one that was donated to the zoo uh, that, that somebody wanted to uh, get rid of oh, probably about eight years ago. Now, Hisabella, she's a large snake. She's a red-tailed boa. And she's, you know, large, you know, for her particular subspecies. She's about 54 pounds, and she's over 10 feet long right now. And that's probably topping out right now. She might get a little bit bigger. Now, one thing when you look at snakes, you know, they're a little bit different. They're reptiles. They're cold-blooded. You know, and in this exhibit, we have to make sure that, you know, the exhibit is large enough for, you know, kind of the rule of thumb with snakes is it has to be about two-thirds of their body. Well, you can see this is a nice large exhibit, but also the temperature gradient has to be so that the temperature inside here should range between 75 and roughly around 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's real important uh, for health-wise and for her metabolism. Now, um, with these snakes like this, like I say they're constrictors, so they constrict their prey. But when you're looking at a snake like this, how would you determine how big of a prey item or a food item that you would go ahead and feed or what it could eat? Hmm. And kind of the rule of thumb is that is what you take a look at. Looking over here, the size of her girth, so you can see how large this is. Now, that would be about the size of a prey item that she could actually swallow. Now, if you take a look at her head, she's got a triangular shaped head. The lower jaw is real flexible. And the bones in the back of the jaw articulate so that they can actually separate. And in the front, there's a little ligament that's real flexible. So she can open up her mouth and she could actually ingest a prey item that's about this big around and bring this in. Now one of the neat adaptations that snakes have, that, you know, that are different than us, so say she's swallowing a real large prey item. Well, what does that do to your insides, okay? They have the ability, their heart is in a sack, that the heart is able to move and slide from side to side as the prey item goes in. Hmm. So they have a real flexible uh, heart area that, you know, like I said, the sac can move. But here's one of the other neat things, too, is, you know, like us, you know, you got pairs, so you get your lungs and kidneys, and they're roughly, you know, the same, you know, they're roughly about the same, you know, way here, horizontally. But what they are staggered all the way down. And one neat thing, too, is their left lung is almost absent. In some snakes, it is absent. So a real different uh, internal anatomy for these snakes as well. Yeah, just get that, that prey all the way down there and, right? Yeah, and absolutely. The body and it's all set. Well, well, thanks, Neil. I know that um, Rachel would love to go out there and see that snake close up. <laughs> I don't mind snakes. You don't? Really? Nope, I'm okay with snakes. It's okay, spiders, we'll see about like. that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> all right, we'll see ya.